Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining. Uh, since I started this, I've been inundated with thousands of questions, and this is an attempt to deal with a lot of the questions that come in. Anyway, inundated with thousands of questions, so I thought as kind of a precursor for Bitcoin for beginners would be a good idea to address many of the issues that many of you have. In this video, I discuss all the basics of Bitcoin and talk about financial freedom, the evolution of money, where we are in the adoption, and what a little bit a little bit of under the hood of what is Bitcoin. Not too deep, but a little bit. And I talk about dollars and cents, risk and rewards, and I jump into the actual haters. I talk about government policy towards Bitcoin, and I talk about some of the other coins that are out there, the changes in Wall Street and the big names jumping in, a little bit of economics 101, and then a big part as to why this actually exists and why it has really piqued my interest. After that, I talk about inflation hedges, the empty money supply, the silent thief, apples and oranges, and I jump into gold. Then I talk about how to start accumulating Bitcoin and how you should invest. And then talk about the zero-sum game and weak hands. Then jump into economic supply, whole coiner, ways to play this and get involved in the revolution, and the importance of math and my approach to this whole market. Then I talk a little bit about planet Earth and how this is used as a real-time currency all over the world, the history of Bitcoin, and is it safe? Is it a bubble? Price predictions. And after that, finally, the conclusions after talking about some of the typical Bitcoin lexicon that's out there. So a big mouthful of things. So I'm just going to go through this as quickly as I can. But first of all, I want to talk about scammers real quick. Many of you know this already, but I am very involved in the chat that's online. However, do not respond to anybody that doesn't have a black ring around Invest Answers. You will see two examples here. Me at the top. Invest Answers, Invest Answers is in black. A second example. No Invest Answers in black and they'll ask for information or put down phone numbers. Okay, pretty obvious. I think you guys are wise to it already. So let's talk about financial freedom. This is about much more than money. And this is not financial advice, but a lot of life-changing things can happen in this topic, in this area, and that's why many people are so passionate. So bear with me as I go through this as quickly as possible. So let's jump into the history of money real quick. Simple evolution of money. Back in the day, Stone Age man, etc., they would barter. They would trade a cow for some corn or who knows what. Then there was gold. Then there was metals. And there was paper money. And those plastic cards, electric money, began with PayPal. And now we are in the cryptocurrency world. Okay, one of the things I just want to highlight here is the haters live in that whole area of gold, metal, and paper money. And as Bitcoin goes higher and higher, the level of hate seems to increase. I'm beginning to feel some of that myself in some of the comments as well. So that's the history of money. If you can understand that simple history, you'll understand why it's important to be digital and understand more about the digital revolution. So where are we in terms of the adoption curve? This is very important to understand. We are about 1.7% into the adoption of Bitcoin. Extremely early. This is when the early adopters, even before the early adopters jump in, it's when the innovators are there. So if you are part of this revolution now, you are an innovator. So congratulations. The next five to 10 years will be critical and we'll see a big explosion in how much adoption there actually is out there. Okay, what is Bitcoin? I tried to summarize this as simple as possible. Bitcoin is the first cryptocurrency. The invention was the first example of blockchain technology. And it is the world's most popular cryptocurrency. Okay, people say there are 21 million coins. I say there will never be more than 14 million. If you look at some of my other videos, you'll see exactly why. Bitcoin was invented by Satoshi Nakamoto, who wrote a white paper. And Bitcoin inspired a whole bunch of other cryptocurrencies, including some very scary shitcoins. In fact, I made a public post a month or two ago about XRP saying it's dangerous. Somebody asked me a question, what do you think of XRP? I say stay away from that stuff. It's the Wild West. So again, I tend to be a big proponent of things that I know and I can trust and things I believe are safe. Don't ask me about XRP and other stuff because I'm not interested in that. Okay, let's talk dollars and cents real quick. Uh, it's important to understand the new world, right? People talk about, oh my God, I want to own Bitcoins, but it doesn't really matter because in the future, pe things, people will pay for everything with sats. 
A sat is one one hundred millionth of a Bitcoin. This little chart here illustrates to the decimal points of where we stand. One one thousand will be a milli Bitcoin and a bit will be one millionth of a Bitcoin. OK, this is the new currency. Five years from now, this will be as logic as dealing with euros or yen or US dollars or anything else like that. One thing before we jump in again, this is not investment advice. There have been extremely high rewards that people who play in this, but typically when there is high reward, there's always high risk. So this is not for the faint of heart. Do not risk anything you can't afford to risk in this space. Very important to stress. So let's talk a bit about the Bitcoin haters. These people hate Bitcoin with a passion. People like Paul Krugman, people like Nouriel Roubini, who uh, Max Kaiser recently said he should be fired from New York University, Omaha icons, and Peter Schiff. These guys just don't get it. You know, many of them are used to investing in traditional things like gold, like insurance companies, and furniture stores, and Coca Cola. But in today's world, where there is zero interest rate, it's very difficult to value a company based on discounted cash flows. And this is where these guys fall down a lot. So think about that. You're going to hear a lot from haters. Don't let them put you off. This is a revolution taking place. I could give you the list, by the way, of all the smart people following Bitcoin, but uh, it's it, the, <laughs> the people who are against it is a much shorter list. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. The other thing people put in your heads is... The government is going to shut it down. Well, they're not, and they couldn't even if they tried. They're very focused on Bitcoin, and they like it, and they support it, because you know why? It's easier to track criminal activity using an open ledger, which is the blockchain, than cash or gold or drugs, etc. It's also very easy to track down things like terrorists. So the new administration under the Biden administration will be very, very pro cryptocurrency good news for bitcoin so don't when people say oh the government's going to shut it down don't worry they're not they might try in other countries but even uh, kim jong-un in north korea owns bitcoin so he's even a proponent okay let's talk about old coins and this is just my perspective everything i say here obviously is my perspective bitcoin is the big 800 pound gorilla market cap of bitcoin today is nearly 750 billion dollars and the volume is huge. The number two player is $141 billion. What's important to note here is the amount of supply of these other currencies. You can see 18.5 million is the amount of Bitcoin, about 4 million are lost, etc. We'll talk about that later. But the Ethereum supply has 114 million Ethereum and Tether and all those others. I don't look at those others. I don't focus on them. People ask me all the time, tell me about Cardano, tell me about Polkadot, tell me about Bitcoin Cash. I could tell you my point of view, but the reason I don't invest is because I don't trust them. I'd rather back the winners. You never, ever invest in the number three player in a market. Always invest the number one and the number two if they have a differentiated value proposition. Hence, I like Ethereum. I believe Ethereum could be huge in the future if they pull off the whole DeFi world. So, Wall Street. A little bit about the change that took place there. Wall Street really turned a massive corner in Q4 2020. All the big shops jumped in. JP Morgan, BlackRock, Deutsche Bank, Citibank. They even came in with some huge price estimations. I saw an article out of Europe that JP Morgan had estimated Bitcoin would go to over $600,000. Citibank over $318,000, etc. So Wall Street are in on the game now. And they're beginning to be pushed by their high net worth investors and big corporations that they support to acquire more. So this is going to put additional pressure on the actual supply of Bitcoin. Huge institutional interest. Very, very important. Some people call it the wall of money. I call it a tsunami. Tons of big names. The Guggenheims, the Grayscales, Paul Tudor Jones, Dan Drucker Miller, Ray Dalio, the Mooch of uh, White House fame from Skybridge, BlackRock, Fidelity, Square, PayPal, big, big, big names. These people, these corporations would not be jumping in if this wasn't real. So again, another feather in the cap, okay? Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about economics. So demand shock on a perfectly and infinitely inelastic supply 
is fascinating to me. I wrapped my head around this about three years ago, and that's why I've always been very, very, very bullish on Bitcoin. So if you look at the two axis price and supply with the different demand shocks that are coming in, you've got your retail demand, your treasuries, your family offices, your ETFs, your sovereigns. In fact, many countries like Iran, Venezuela are beginning to think, can they move their entire currency to Bitcoin? you got your investment advisors and eventually you have your gold bugs. People say, OK, don't hoard gold anymore. Get some Bitcoin. By that time, it'll probably be very expensive. But the key is the demand is increasing exponentially and the supply is very fixed. OK, the real message here is this is the first store of value in the world where the supply is entirely unaffected by the increased demand, which, again, if you know anything about economics, it is a beautiful story and you have to be part of it. OK, inflation. Bitcoin is the best bet against inflation. This is a cruddy graphic, but I like it because it illustrates what you could buy for 20 bucks in 1928 versus today. And what you could buy in 2011 with one Bitcoin versus today. And you can see it's a very different story on both sides. Another way to look at it is think about the empty money supply. 25% of all US dollars were printed in 2020. And because of the new administration, I believe there's going to be a lot more to come in 2021. Who knows? It could be another seven, eight trillion printed, which means the money supply could increase by nearly 40 or 50 percent in a year and a half period, which is staggering. And you all know what that'll do to the cost of blueberries in your local store. So think about that. So the other way to look at it is some people refer to this as the silent thief. This is how inflation gradually steals away your purchasing power over time. So the US dollar will lose 99% of its value over time. I don't know if it's going to take 50 years or 100 years, but that's a guaranteed thing because that's what's happened in the history of the world. The graphic there talks about the currencies in terms of gold and how they shrink. But let's go a little bit deeper and talk about apples to oranges. This is an important analogy that I want people to wrap their heads around. If you imagine Bitcoin being compared to the US dollar, but the US dollar deflates over time, for example, $10 today will be worth about $7 in 10 years. So 2030, you'll have about $7 of purchasing power from your $10 today if you just keep it that way. Put another way, if you think of the cost of Bitcoin today at 39000 in fact, it's close to breaking through 40000 as I speak, that 39000 US dollars will be worth $26,243 in the year 2030. But if you take that 39,000 US dollars today and you put it in Bitcoin, what will Bitcoin be worth as in terms of purchasing power and in terms of US dollars in the year 2030? Well, considering the US dollars will deflate, I believe one Bitcoin will be worth $1 million. But in today's purchasing power, they'll be worth about $672,000. So you have a double whammy here. And one of the reasons why it's very, very important to hedge against inflation is that simple illustration. So always think about how Bitcoin is valued, what it's priced against. Another way to think about Bitcoin pricing is comparing it to gold. So in this simple example, gold is the traditional inflation hedge that the world has always used. But if you look at the amount of ounces or the Bitcoin price, in gold measured in ounces over time, just over the last year. You will see when the year began, one Bitcoin cost five ounces of gold. Ounce of gold is about $1,700. Today, one Bitcoin is worth over 20 ounces of gold. So you got your inflation hedge, gold, and your new inflation hedge, Bitcoin. So the question I pose to you guys and gals, which would you like to own? Which makes sense. So let's go further. So let's compare the different types of tools. So some people refer to Bitcoin as pharmaceutical grade gold. A lot of fake gold out there in places like China and India. But if you look at the traits of money, you can see here money has a lot of problems. It is portable, but it has moderate durability. It can be divided up, but it's not at all scarce. Gold is kind of scarce, but if you want more, you just dig more. And same thing, but it's not really divisible. So you got to 
buy things in gold and kind of an ounce, which is $1,700 a pop. Crypto, Bitcoin, on the other hand, is extremely better than gold in every single perspective, with the exception of the sovereign nature. It is not issued by the government. It's unto itself. So a quick overview as to how these three different forms of exchange differ. Next question I always get is, how do I start? And how little can I buy? So for example, there are many easy on-ramps to pick up Bitcoin. The US could get access to Square Cash, probably use it every day, PayPal, Robinhood, it's low cost, PayPal, super easy. So is the Square Cash app. And it's a great way for people just to get on board fast. For the more sophisticated investor, they should look at Coinbase. Like if you're investing more than 500 bucks, think about going to Coinbase. Binance has the best low rates of the currency. Coinbase Pro is very good for active traders, but I do believe Bitcoin should be something that should be held. And Coin Mama, quick, easy transactions. And then you've got funds coming. you got Grayscale, Bitcoin Fund. you got some ETFs coming. And a lot of other firms are setting up their actual funds. So and this is not a comprehensive list by no means. There are many ways in which you can grab Bitcoin. So what I suggest is find out what your local territory is, do a Google search, pick the best advised one, okay? Uh, the other thing that I get is how much can I buy? Do I need to buy $40,000 worth? I like start with one coin, no. And back to that little image, you can go to one of your little apps, like this is a cash app screenshot. You could buy $1 worth of Bitcoin at the exchange rate, 39,000. And the total Bitcoin purchase is 97 cents worth after a fee of 3, 3%. So that's an idea of, of what you can actually do out there and how much you can actually buy, how much to invest. This is a much more difficult question, but many people recommend no more than one to 5% of your disposable income or wealth. I have a model called Bitcoin insurance in my other video, Retire on Bitcoin by 2030, part one. Part two is coming out soon. So if you want to know how much you should invest, check out that. There's a whole bunch of different models that I put together that you should look at to help calculate how much you should play if you want to be part of this revolution. So the other thing that I want to talk about real quick is big corporations and millionaires are coming for your coins. This thing is really, really scarce. There's not enough to go around. So sometimes games are played by exchanges, etc., to shake out the weak hands. A buddy of mine on Facebook said, oh, I've got a dragging 10% stop loss on my position. I said, dude, don't do that because it's going to be stopped out. And literally within 24 hours, it was stopped out because of massive volatility. So don't be shaken out by the markets. Don't be fooled. If you have a trailing stop in there, it will be filled. The exchanges will find a way to grab your coins and give them to somebody else, okay? This is a long-term accumulate and hold. Remember, it's a zero-sum game. So keep that in mind. Don't sell. Try hold for at least five years. The other thing is the actual supply of Bitcoin. Everybody says 21 million, 21 million, 21 million. If you've seen any of my videos, you heard me talk about that too. No, there'll never be more than 14 million in circulation. If you go look at my video, who's got the coins, you will see all the detail behind my actual calculations. But that is very, very little. Now, also when you consider about nine and a half million coins are already tied up here. Another way of looking at it is 18 and a half million coins have been mined to date. The other 4.6 million coins have lost. 8.9 million are tied up with high net worth individuals, corporate treasuries, funds, and governments. So the rest of the world has to fight over 4.6 million coins. That's not a lot of coins considering we have 7.8 billion people on this planet and 50 millionaires. So another uh, interesting way to look at things is whole coiner update. Less than 638,000, probably less than 500,000 people eventually will be able to own more than one Bitcoin. So that means these, say, 638,000 people will be sharing 4.6 million coins of the total supply. Nine and a half million are locked up. So it's just interesting ways to think. Don't think there's 21 million coins. There's not. So... Little ways to play. Another question I get a lot is, how can I play and be part of this without actually buying Bitcoin directly? So some of the tools that I like to be part of the revolution, obviously it's good to have some Bitcoin, 
I'm not suggesting otherwise. Not investment advice, but just ways to play. But there's also a call option on the future of Bitcoin, which I call MicroStrategy. It's a huge play. I've put out three videos already in the last month on MicroStrategy, and uh, you can tell how bullish I am. I kept pumping. I pumped two videos out. One is at $290 and $299. Today, it went up 50 bucks. It's actually 530 something now. Grayscale Bitcoin Trust is another way to play. That is a function of Bitcoin directly. Uh, PayPal is a big Bitcoin player, so is Square, so they will benefit from this revolution. So consider them, again, a call option as well in the future of Bitcoin. Then you've got two other uh, coins that I find very interesting, Ethereum and the Ethereum Grayscale Trust. Not as good as the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, but if, if you have a retirement account or IRA or some equivalent in some part of the world, it's good. and if you can't access... Bitcoin in those accounts, you can buy these alternatives. So in math, we trust, not government. I just wanted to throw that in there. I have all my life. I've been a big believer that the universe is driven by mathematics. Today is the time where we see a lot of that coming true. So basically think of Bitcoin as a massive self-fulfilling prophecy that's driven by mathematics and cannot be influenced by governments. Bitcoin is also a real-time currency. This is a map of the world that shows you exactly how much Bitcoin is worth in all of these different places. Nigeria is the most expensive. They must have crazy commissions over there. But you can see real-time prices in different currencies all over the world all the time. So the history of Bitcoin, if you're tuning into this video to find the whole history of Bitcoin, there's a thousand videos out there. Many of them are very well done. I'm not going to rehash that. So Just do a Google search for the history of Bitcoin. You'll find some incredible videos. Well, one of the final questions, is it a bubble? So what's kind of interesting here, and unfortunately, the uh, text here has covered up Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is now right behind Facebook as the 10th biggest organization by market capitalization. Bitcoin is also the biggest bank on earth. Think about that. It is only a bubble if it is fake or if it's going away. So no, Bitcoin's not a bubble. Bitcoin's not a Ponzi scheme. And Bitcoin is safe. Look at the size of it. It's now reached that critical mass. Soon, I believe it could be worth a trillion dollars. Where's the price going? Again, pointing you to, I don't want to rehash stuff, but I have a very detailed price prediction video called Best Bitcoin Price Predictions Part 2, where I talk about the my price estimations of Bitcoin based on 35 different price predictions over the next 17 years. So if you want to delve into that, go right ahead. And another question that always comes up, who controls Bitcoin? Nobody owns the Bitcoin network except for the users. And Bitcoin is controlled by all users around the world. Okay, so nobody can control it or influence it. One thing I do want to remind you again, risk of entry today versus 90 days ago is extremely different. So my first ever YouTube video went out exactly on October 7th this year, which is 90 days ago to the day. And it's very bizarre because at that time, Bitcoin was at $10,000. And if you watch that video, I urged everybody to get a piece because this thing was about to explode. So somehow I've been very lucky with my timing recently. But entering now is risky. If you look at the chart from 10,000 to 40,000 in 90 days, it looks very parabolic. So the risk of entering the market now is far higher than ever before. So I just want to stress that. Think about it. Again, look at the previous slides and the amount of money. Final, final thing is I'm going to talk about some of the lexicon that's important to know. Uh, ATH, when you are in the Bitcoin space, you can hear a lot of different words that are important to be familiar with. All-time high is ATH. Whales hold more than 1,000 Bitcoins. HODL is the slang to hold. Hold it, don't sell it. Getting wrecked is getting wiped out. So if people buy things like Bitcoin on margin, they can get crushed really fast, especially with the volatility. A shill is somebody who discreetly advertises stuff. There's a lot of shilling going on with the altcoins. Be careful of that. A bear trap is when there is a quick price decrease, causing people to panic and sell. And then it's followed by an uptrend. Don't get caught in the bear trap. Bags is somebody who holds lots of Bitcoin. Stacking sats is what you should all be doing. Accumulating as much Satoshi as you can. They're one one hundredth millionth of a Bitcoin. 
So think in terms of not whole Bitcoins, but think in terms of sets as you go forward. Buy sell wool is when big buy or sell orders are there to manipulate the price. TA, technical analysis. If you look at YouTube, you're going to find thousands of people. All they do is look at charts all day. That should just be one of your element of how you identify opportunities. 51% attack. Probably the most important thing here. This is the only thing that makes me concerned about Bitcoin is how if a country could nationalize more than 51% of all nodes or miners, there is a way they could coerce a manipulation of the Bitcoin network. Highly unlikely, but everything is theoretically possible. And a blow off top is a chart pattern that shows a steep and rapid increase in securities price and then boom, it tanks. Okay, so these are things that you're gonna hear about as you go forward in this new realm. Finally, final conclusion, Bitcoin is what some people refer to as a black hole swallowing the world. And uh, two quotes that I really like. Uh, one is from Michael Saylor, the swarm of cyber hornets serving the goddess of wisdom feeding on the fire of truth, exponentially growing ever smarter, faster and stronger behind a wall of encrypted energy. The little imagery there is kind of cute. And the second piece from Ross L. Stevens, each citizen has a choice. You can stay on the fiat, or the cash in your pocket, or you can opt into Bitcoin standard. Okay, so that's really the end conclusion here. You got a choice. I spent a lot of time talking about inflation and how that's going to eat away at your money. I like think of it like a melting ice cube. And uh, I hope that was a good intro. I was hoping to do it in 10 minutes. It didn't happen. Thank you so much, everybody. Hope 2021 is going well. Look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.